creating an AR experience. Now that you're familiar with creating VR sessions using the 3GS library, creating an AR session will be a walk in the park. Just like VR, we need to enable XR for the renderer. Open app.js in the folder start lecture 3 underscore 9 to work along with this video. The basic template is very similar to the VR ones. We create the obligatory camera scene and renderer in the app constructor. Then we call init scene and set up XR. In init scene we create the geometry of a box that is 6 cm wide, tall and deep. When working in WebXR the dimensions are important and relate to the metric scale. Then we create an array of meshes. We're going to use this in the render event. Slide down to see. Notice we use the for each method of an array to allow us to rotate the meshes in the meshes array in the y axis by 0.01 radians, about half a degree. Remember this will happen every frame update, which for most devices will be 60 times a second. So the meshes will rotate 30 degrees per second, or 12 seconds for a full revolution. It's a super simple template. What we need to do is add some code to the setup XR method. Find the method in the code and add the code you need to enable XR. I'm not going to tell you yet. Pause the video and give it a try. How did you do? Did you add this.renderer.xr.enabled equals true? If so, give yourself a pat on the back. Nice work. Now let's add some more code. Enter cons self equals this, let controller, function on select, cons btn equals new ar button, this.renderer. Controller equals this.renderer.xr.getController0. Controller.addEventListener select on select. This.scene.add controller. The 3GS library comes with an AR button class, but I prefer the one I adapted from the library version. If you'd prefer to use the library version, it's in the 3JSM folder in the course resources. Or if you're using the complete 3GS library, then it's in the examples.js webxr folder. If you do choose to use the 3GS version, then the syntax is different. My version adds the button directly to the page. The 3GS version, by adding the AR button to the imports, you create a global level variable called AR button that has a number of methods, one of which is create button. To add the button to the page, call the create button method and add the return DOM element to the document. It seemed unnecessarily complex, so I moved this into the constructor for the class, but you'd use this code if you prefer to use it. You might be surprised to see a controller in an AR app. Most AR apps will be used on mobile phones after all. Actually, the screen is used as the controller, and so controller zero is the first touch. Much more about controllers in AR in the remaining videos in this section. But notice here we add an event listener to the select event. A select event occurs when a full cycle of select start and select end completes. If you run the app as it currently is, you will be disappointed. If you're running in a desktop browser using the WebXR emulator, then make sure to select the AR device in the drop down list. We need to add some code to the onSelect function. Add const material equals new 3 dot mesh fong material color 0x ff 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 times math dot random cons mesh equals new 3 dot mesh self dot geometry material mesh dot position dot set 0 0 minus 0 0.3 apply matrix 4 controller dot matrix world mesh dot quaternion dot set from rotation matrix controller dot matrix world self dot scene dot add mesh self dot meshes dot push mesh we create a material that is randomly coloured. Fong material is a simple class that uses the scene lights when calculating pixel colours. Then we create a mesh that uses the geometry we created in the init scene method. Then we set the position for the mesh 
at minus 0 0.3 in the Z, a little away from the origin. Then we use the apply matrix 4 method to move this position so it relates to the controller's world matrix. Effectively we use the touch location in world coordinates and the phone orientation to position the mesh directly away from the screen touch position by 30 centimeters or about a foot. We also set the orientation of the mesh from the set from rotation matrix method of a quaternion. If you're new to 3D then you might be unfamiliar with quaternions. A quaternion is a four component mathematical entity that can be used to store orientations. Now is not the time for a long explanation of rotations in 3D. It's a tricky subject. Suffice to say that the Irish mathematician William Rowan Hamilton's invention of quaternions is now almost universally adopted as the most efficient method for storing orientations in a 3D space. Having set the pose for the mesh, we add it both to the scene and to the mesh's array. If you run the app now and enter AR, tapping the screen will result in a new box appearing. You've created your first AR app. That wasn't too hard, was it? 3GS takes care of much of the complexity. In this video we touch on controllers in AR. This video is from my Udemy course, Learn to Create WebXR, VR and AR Experiences with 3GS. Get the full course at a great discount by following the link at nicklever.com forward slash courses.